Hi friends, Helen McCrean here again with with the James Thurber. <laughs> what else could I possibly say? I enclose a sketch of the way my dog, William, has been lying for two days now. I think there must be something wrong with him. Can you tell me how to get him out of this? Mrs. L.L.G. I should judge from the drawing that William is in a trance. Now, uh, Trance states are rare with dogs. It uh, may just be ecstasy. If at the end of uh, another 24 hours he doesn't seem to be getting anywhere, I, uh, well, I should give him up. The, the uh, position of the ears leads me to believe that he, he may be enjoying himself in a quiet sort of way. <laughs> But the tale is somewhat alarming. Our, our cat, who is 35, spends all her time in bed. She, she follows every move I make, and this is beginning to get to me. She never seems sleepy nor particularly happy. Is, is there anything I could give her? Mrs. L. McSee. There are no medicines which can safely be given to induce felicity in a cat. But you might try lettuce, which is a, a soporific for the wakefulness. I would have to see the cat watching you to tell whether, whether anything could be done to divert her attention. My husband who is an amateur hypnotizer, keeps trying to get our bloodhound under his control. I contend that this is not doing the dog any good. So far, he has not yielded to my husband's influence, but I am afraid that if he once got under, we couldn't get him out of it. A-A-T. Dogs are usually left cold by all phases of psychology, mental telepathy, and the like. <laughs> Attempts to hypnotize this particular breed, however, are likely to be fraught with a definite menace. A bloodhound, if, if stared at fixedly, is liable to gain the impression that it is under suspicion uh, being followed, and so on. This upsets the bloodhound's life by completely reversing its whole scheme of behavior. My wife found this owl in the attic among a lot of, a lot of armaloo clocks and old crystal chandeliers. We can't tell whether it's stuffed or only dead. It is sitting on a strange and almost indescribable sort of iron dingbat. Mr. Mollet. What your wife found is a museum piece, a, a stuffed cockatoo. Looks to me like a rather botchy example of taxidermy. This is the first stuffed bird I have ever seen with its eyes shut. But whoever had it stuffed probably wanted it stuffed that way. I couldn't say what the thing it is sitting on is supposed to be. It, uh, it looks broken. Our gull cannot get his head down any farther than this and bumps into things. H-L-F. You have no ordinary gull to begin with. Looks to me a, a great deal like a like a rabbit 
backing up. If he is a gull, it is impossible to keep him in the house. Naturally, he will bump into things. Give him his freedom. My police dog has taken to acting very strange on account of my father coming home from work every night for the past two years and saying to him, if you're a police dog, where's your badge? After which he laughs. Yeah, my, my father. Ella R. The constant reiteration of any piece of badinage sometimes has, has the the same effect on present-day dogs that it has on people. It is, it is dangerous and, and thoughtless to twit a police dog on his powers, authority, and the like. But the way your dog seems to hide behind tables, large vases, and whatever that thing is that looks like a suitcase, I should imagine that your father has carried this thing far enough. Perhaps even too far. My husband's seal will not juggle, although we have tried everything. Grace H. Well, most seals will not juggle. I think I, I have never known one that juggled. Seals balance things and, and sometimes toss objects like 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 the large ball in your sketch from one to another of course this last would be difficult if your husband has but one seal i i try him in in plain balancing I'm beginning with a, a billiard cue or something <laughs> maybe of course that uh, that he is a a non-balancing seal. We have a fish with ears and wonder is it valuable. Joe Wright. I find no trace in, in the standard fish books of any fish with ears. Well, very likely the ears do not belong to the fish but to some mammal. <laughs> It looked to me like mammal's ears. Because it would be pretty hard to say what species of mammal and, and almost impossible to determine what particular member of that species. Uh, they, they may be merely hysterical ears, in which case they will go away if you can get the fish's mind on something else. Well, how would you feel if every time you looked up from your work or anything, here was a horse peering at you from behind something? He, he prowls about the house at all hours of the day and night. He doesn't seem worried about anything, just merely wakeful. What should I do to discourage him? Mrs. Grace Boynton. The horse is probably sad. Changing the flower decorations in your home to something something less like open meadows might discourage him. Uh, then I, I doubt whether it is a, a good idea to discourage a sad horse. In any case, speak to him quietly when, when he turns up from behind things. <laughs> Leaping at a horse in a house and crying, Roogie, Roogie, and whoosh! <laughs> well, that would only result in breakage and bedlam. <laughs> of course, you might finally get used to having him around if the house is big enough for both of you. The fact that my dog sits this way so often leads me to believe that something is preying on his mind. He seems always to be studying. Would there be any way of finding out what this is? Arthur. Owing 
Welcome to the artificially complex life led by city dogs of the present day. They, they tend to lose the, the simpler systems of intuition which once guided all breeds. And, and they frequently lapse into what comes very close to mental perplexity. I myself have known some very profoundly thoughtful dogs. Usually, however, their, their problems are not serious. And I should judge that your dog has merely mislaid something and wonders where he put it. We have cats the way most people have, have mice. Mrs. C. L. Footloose. I see you have. I can't tell from your communication, however, whether you wish advice or are just boasting. No one has been able to tell us what kind of dog we have. I am enclosing a sketch of one of his two postures. He only has two. The other one is the same as this, except he faces in the opposite direction. This is Eugenia Black. I think that what you have is a cast iron lawn dog. The expressionless eye and the rigid pose are, are characteristic of metal lawn animals. And that, that certainly is a, a cast iron ear. You could, however, remove all doubt by means of a simple test with a, with a hammer and a coal chisel or an acetylene torch. If the animal chips or melts, my diagnosis is correct. My oldest boy, Ford Maddox Ford Griswold, worked this wooden horse loose from a merry-go-round one night when he and the, some other young people were cutting up. Could you suggest any use for it in a family of five? Mrs. R. L. S. Griswold. I cannot try the patience of my public nor waste my own time with the problems of insensate animals. Already I've gone too far afield with the, with the stuffed birds and, and cast iron lawn dogs. Pretty soon I should be giving advice on wire hair fox terrier weather vanes. Mr. Jennings bought this beast when it was a pup in Montreal for a St. Bernard. But I don't think it is. It's grown enormously and is, is stubborn about letting you have anything, like like the bath towel it has its paws on, and, and the hat, both of which belong to Mr. Jennings. He got it that bowling ball to play with, but it doesn't seem to like it. Mr. Jennings is greatly attached to the creature. Mrs. Fanny Edwards Jennings. What you got is a bear. And while it isn't my bear, I, I should recommend you, you dispose of it. As these animals grow older, they get more and more adamant about, about letting you have anything until finally there might not be anything in the house that you could call your own. <laughs> except possibly the bowling ball. Zoos use bears. Mr. Jennings could, could visit it. Sometimes my dog does not seem to know me. 
I think he must be crazy. He will draw away or, or show his fangs when I approach him. H.M. Morgan, Jr. Well, so would I, and I'm not crazy. If you creep up on your dog the way you, you indicate in your drawing, I can understand his viewpoint. Put your shirt in and straighten up. You, you look like you've never seen a dog before. And that is undoubtedly what, what bothers the animal. <sighs> These maladjustments can, can often be worked out by the, the use of a, a little common sense. After a severe storm, we found this old male raven in the study of my father, the Honorable George Morton Bodwell, for many years the head of the Latin department at Tufts, sitting on a bust of Livy, which was a gift to him from the class of 92. All the old bird will say is, Grok, can ravens be taught to talk? Or was Mr. Poe merely romanticizing? Mrs. H. Bodwell Coldweather. I am handicapped by an uncertainty as to who says grok, the raven or your father. It just happens that ark is what ravens say. I have never known a raven that said anything but ark. I have three Scotch terriers which take things out of closets and down from shelves, etc. My veterinarian advised me to gather together all the wreckage, set them down in the midst of it, and say, Bad Scotties. This, however, merely seems to give them a a kind of pleasure. If I spank one, the other two jump me. They're playfully, but they jump me. Mrs. O. S. Proctor. To begin with, I question the advisability of having three Scotch Terriers. Now, they're bound to get you down. Well, However, it, it seems to me you're needlessly complicating your own problem. The, the Scotties probably think you're trying to enter into the spirit of their play. <laughs> their inability to comprehend what you're trying to get at in the end will make them melancholy. And, and you and the, the dogs will begin to drift farther and farther apart. <laughs> I, I deal with each terrier and each object separately, beginning with the telephone, the disconnection of which must inconvenience you sorely. My husband paid $175 for this moose to a man in Dorset, Ontario, who said he had trapped it in the woods. Something is wrong with his antlers, for we have to keep twisting them back into place all the time. They are loose. This is Oliphant Beatty. You people are living in a fool's paradise. The animal is obviously a horse with a span of antlers strapped to his head. Do you really want a moose? Dispose of the horse. If you want to keep the horse and take the antlers off, the, their constant pressure on his ears isn't a good idea. Mm -hmm.